Tim, welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. By very popular demand, today we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona, reference 116500LN, the Lunette Noir, the first of the ceramic bezel stainless steel Rolex Daytonas. You can see this watch and you can purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see full pricing for this watch, as well as accessories included and high resolution images. Now, released at Basel World 2016, this was, quite literally, the one Rolex enthusiasts had been waiting for. First seen in 2011, the ceramic bezel Rolex Daytona had been reserved entirely for the precious metal variants, variously gold and platinum. However, for 2016, it migrated to the bedrock of the Daytona class, the stainless steel variant. Now there are two different versions, one with a silver dial and one with a black dial, but it's the example with the black dial that may be the most striking simply because of the way it seems to magnify the size and the wrist presence of this timepiece. Now on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that the appearance of increased size is very much an illusion. Same size case, 40 millimeters across the round of the case, not including pushers, crown guards, or crown. It's only 12 millimeters thick, and you can see that the ceramic bezel, much like the metal equivalent before it, is nicely sloped with a conical profile that allows the watch to easily fit underneath a dress cuff. Now, from lug to lug, it's more compact than you would expect, approximately 47 millimeters from lug to lug. It's 51 from solid end link to solid end link across the bracelet. Now the watch wears with the same mass you would recognize from the original in full stainless steel. Although ceramic is a bit lighter, there isn't enough of it on this watch to make a difference in the wrist impression unless you're talking about the visual impression on the wrist, in which case the watch has a ton of punch. The bracelet's beautifully made as ever. It's the three link Rolex Oyster in this case. You can see that it's polished on the absolute flanks, satin finish on its outer edges, and the center links all of polish. Every link is solid, center links as well as end links, and it still terminates in a beautifully finished Rolex milled out oyster clasp. As ever, in the modern era, you get the five millimeter easy link adjustment, so you can rapidly take in or take out five millimeters of length as activity and heat or cold dictate. It also features a very robust closure that closes with a reassuring snick and snap, beautifully finished with contrast metal. You can see that the watch aesthetically represents a great departure from prior six digit Daytonas because the way the black dial just seems to flow seamlessly into a single solid disc of noir with the bezel. It's impressive, it's imposing, it's powerful, and it's also wonderfully simple. The fact that so much visual impact can be achieved without gem setting, without two-tone, without any kind of guilloche gimmick or bizarre metal finish speaks to just how essential, one might even say elemental, the appeal of this watch really is. Now, the tachymetric scale is quite robust here. It is the same technology we've seen previously on Rolex Cerachrome bezels, so ceramic, effectively as indelible as sapphire crystal, designed for long-wearing durability, filled with platinum in the fashion of Rolex's Cerachrome bezels on steel watches, so the platinum itself highly resistant to tarnish, completely resistant to corrosion, and providing a very nice contrast and upscale sheen. The watch has a gorgeous gloss black dial. You can see the shock of red with the Daytona script above constant seconds at six o'clock. And inside beats the well-known Rolex caliber 4130 in its most highly evolved form. Now it debuted back in 2000 as the first modern era Rolex in-house chronograph. Vertical clutch, column wheel, each a measure of refinement that makes the watch a pleasure to operate as well as more durable in practice. The watch also features a Parachrome Bleu hairspring, which was introduced during the changeover from the 2006 to the 2007 model year. A Breguet overcoil, it resists positional variation in rate, but it also helps to resist magnetism in its blue iteration. 
configuration. The watch features a full balance bridge for shock attenuation as well as a free sprung architecture to the balance, again, for shock attenuation and for precision in the face of shocks. Now with a 72 hour power reserve, it has three days of autonomy between full windings and a very smooth bi-directional winding system underneath the brushed steel case back. All of this with 100 meter hermeticity thanks to the screw downs. In a lot of ways with the screw down crown, the black bezel and the black dial, this one harkens back to the mid to late 80s, the last time the Rolex reference 6263 manual wind Daytona with black bezel was still in the catalog. So if I had to say this watch is a tribute in any sense, it would be to the last of the 6263s, albeit with completely modern specification, capped by Rolex's latest superlative chronometer standard. So the watch is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. However, as of this year, there is a new standard, superlative chronometer, and substantively, that means that Rolex takes takes the COSC certified movement, cases it up, because COSC is performed on bare movements, not cased watches, and then it tests it to no worse than plus two, minus two seconds per day, far in excess of COSC, and of course, being cased a completely different class of certification. You can see this highly refined, best of breed Rolex Cosmograph Daytona, the latest evolution. This is the 116 500 LN. You can see it and you can buy it on our website.